I'll back it up here to our Pajetto of wide receivers with Chris Olave. We love our guests here to come back and they cement their legacies with w- one hit take. You are Mr. Debo Samuel over Brandon Ayuk from two years past. Mm-hmm. We, I want to walk it back and kind of give a theme here where they were two wide receivers, two talented wide receivers on a team. You had one vet Debo a little younger than where I'm about to go with this, but coming off injuries. And then you had a first round wide receiver there with Brandon Ayuk having a good, very good rookie year. A lot of people super, super excited. Uh, top 20 across the board. Just how high we have top 12, but you can you can argue there with Chris Alava here in New Orleans. I want to hear you give me a Michael Thomas take. I know in our group chats, we had a little bit of buzz yesterday talking Michael Thomas and the Saints with him looking like he's going to stay around. How do you feel with those two? Is Chris Alava still locked loaded? And what's the immediate immediate uh, production that you expect out of those two wide receivers? Yeah, th- this is. This is going to be fascinating. I am still going Alave. I I believe that Michael Thomas, the game is going to be past him. He's a guy that I'm staying away from, and and that's that's a pivot for me. I'll I'll be blunt. I I was in going into last year. I was excited. I was happy. I, I thought we had something going. I thought Michael Thomas was going to come back. Andy Dalton's going to hit him on slants, and away we go. Right. But I, I just don't see a guy that far removed from football coming in and making a big enough splash to take away from Chris Olave. Now, that said, I want to be real careful on Chris Olave. One of the things we tend to do in fantasy football is we see a rookie come on the scene and do what someone like Olave or even a Garrett Wilson did. And we say, well, if they did that in their first year, extrapolate that out in this particular case where you're talking Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave specifically, let's talk the two Ohio state guys. I couple them. There are a lot of similarities. You are talking the two most pro ready wide receivers in last year's draft. So when you look at that kind of what we tend to do with extrapolation, you always want to take that with a grain of salt with these polished guys, these guys that are great route runners already, these guys that are doing it with volume. Like if we were talking about Traylon Burks, for example, who was looked at as someone who was unique, he did it a little differently. If he exploded on the scene, you could still expect growth because there was growth to be had. I think what you saw from Olave is a lot of what you can expect this coming year as well. I'd say, you know, ceiling of say 1,210, which is great. Don't get me wrong, right? But if people are thinking that all of a sudden he's going to burst onto the scene with a 1,500-yard season and 14 touchdowns, I just don't think that's going to happen. I I think if I'm putting a projection on it, it's like 1,108. Uh, I think that's just what Alave is because I think he came in kind of ready-made. Like, that's who he was. That's what you were getting. And this was the same thing we talked about when Justin Jefferson came out, that he was the most pro-ready of the group and ready to contribute in a pro-style offense. So there wasn't that learning curve with a player like Jefferson, with a player like Alave. And I just think his ceiling is still capped a little bit being on the offense that he's on and being the player that he is. I just don't see him upper echelon Jamar Chase type guy. So when I see where he's going, I, I don't think he's going to actually match his ADP personally. I, I, I'm fading him at where people are starting to take him. Yeah, I think with everything we saw, you can be completely excited. And as you mentioned, the prospect profiles between Chris Olive and Garrett Wilson are nearly identical. We've pulled it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go on our clip catalog, which I will – I'll link under this video when it gets re-uploaded. You can find it in our Discord, which is in the description already. Our clips catalog for the Dynasty Digest where we put in – a hyperlink to every single player when we've clipped up and gives you the last part we talked about. You can go back and look where we last talked about Chris Olave, where we put up the visual of just how close him and Garrett Wilson really were. I do agree with you here that Chris Olave does seem like a guy who's going to be more like that wide receiver two for your team, just that consistent wide receiver two for your team. And I'm as excited as anybody, but I like to keep these ceilings realistic. So I'm right there with you. We might want to pump the brakes if you're locking him in as where his value might be top 12, his production long-term might not necessarily be that in and out sees every single season, top 12 wide receiver. 
Um, it's more because I think he's a little safer. I think he's super, super talented. I think he's going to be have an impact on your team, whether it's elite impact or wide receiver two type impact for a long time. So I think he's really valuable in that sense. He's, he's mm-hmm. a safe player, and I think he can be very productive alongside Michael Thomas. But I would agree with you over the situation, that ceiling in the short term, it's potentially more capped than people feel. Um, Michael Thomas specifically, you know, my, my, my opinion on Michael Thomas is for dynasty. We've, we've, we've seen this over and over, right? We've seen this project as a guy who's been playing with the idea of Michael Thomas for years. Um, I wouldn't overinvest in this guy. Yeah, him coming back to New Orleans, Derek Carr coming in. This isn't the type of player that I'm going to be um, super targeting. Um, Show me that quarterback board while we're talking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, but perfect. Yeah, he's not somebody I'm super targeting, but if you can get him tossed in as part of a deal over like over a third of Andrews completely, yeah, I think that's totally, totally fine. Because Michael Thomas really could come back. He could be a wide receiver two type for your team, right? I agree, football might pass him. We haven't seen him play mm-hmm. consistently or at a high level for a long time. But even last year, three games, three touchdowns. I mean, that's not an easy thing to do in the NFL. I think he still has a role. Um, this is a guy, especially for your underdog drafts, your redraft perspective. You're talking ADP like 107, 120. This is round 9, 10, 11 of your draft at that point. Yeah. Why not? Those are, those are players that you're not necessarily you're, – you're not necessarily even potentially keeping for the whole season. So he fits right in there where it's a very good risk-reward. 